Well, I just checked the date of the last narrated video that I've posted right here. This one on the right. And it says three years ago. That's pretty crazy. I have been kidnapped by my own projects. And, uh, but hey, I'm back. So hi. What I wanted to talk about this time is uh, less of a painting demo, although I will be painting a little bit. I want to talk a little bit more casually about uh, using color. It's definitely the number one question I get. Using color and being confident with color, yet still representing reality and painting convincing light. In the videos I've posted, I've talked about that, and I encourage everyone to watch those. But um, I wanted to take like real life situations where I'm actually, the paintings I'm actually doing, the environment, the background is relatively worked out. Um, let's zoom right in here. Um, this, is, this painting is at a level where I'm starting to have fun with color. When I block in a painting, I don't really worry about color so much. But when I'm actually working at this stage of it, this is where I'm having fun with little color shifts and um, really expressing myself through the abstraction of color. Color is an abstract thing. There's no rules. Okay, I, I can talk about drawing. I can talk about values. Those have more or less kind of rules or, or very solid principles that you can count on. But color is really personal. Okay, and you can see as I'm zooming around this painting that if I zoom in close enough, um, it, it is an abstract painting. Okay, it, it's a painting of abstract shapes with color variations that are hopefully interesting in and of themselves. So when you zoom out, all of these color notes kind of blend together and create sort of a, a non-static thing. The, the number one thing I see as a teacher, you know, I, I've been teaching for the past seven or eight years now, the student's color tends to be very static and, and not moving. Okay, color has to move. If you look at this, bring up the color picker here. If I sample this color, and then just immediately beside it, you can see there's a huge difference. And then even immediately beside that, and immediately beside that, look at all of these colors that are being used in just one area of this painting. Okay, this is something I actively try and do. And the tools I use, I use brushes, of course. Um, I, I like this uh, square shaped brush. I will simply zoom in, not maybe not this close, but I'll maybe zoom in about to this level here. And uh, you know, you just start working in these shapes of colors. And I'm thinking abstractly now. The drawing has been done, okay? I can zoom out again. The drawing of this painting, you know, the, 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 what it is, the subject, it has been established. Okay, it's a cardboard sort of handmade castle that these kids have built in the woods. Uh, that's there. That was my first step. You know, I thumbnailed that out. I drew it out. Now at this stage, I'm, I'm about six hours into this painting. At this stage, it's about expressing myself through color. I've already expressed myself through drawing. Now I'm focusing just on the color step. Painting is a multifaceted thing. It starts with drawing and and design with lines as as an animator would design with lines and then you have the next step which is which is building up a series of abstract colors with abstract edges between them and when i say abstract i mean that in and of themselves they don't mean anything like this color that i'm painting with right now happens to be this grayish uh kind of purplish blue that color by itself doesn't mean anything i'm just putting it down okay you can see me put that down here and then beside that, I'll switch to a warmer color, which happens to be this medium saturated yellowy orange color, which also in and of itself doesn't mean anything. And I will connect them with various edges. Another tool I love to use is the smudge tool. This is the smudge tool here, which looks like this. As, I, as you put down a stroke, it starts painting the color you have on your brush and then quickly uh, the color goes away and it just starts smudging the colors that are already on the canvas. You know, as an oil painter, this is a very useful tool that I love. It's the, the smudge tool again in Photoshop. Uh, I use that for almost, I'd say half of my painting is done with the smudge tool. If I put this down with one stroke, it creates a fairly hard edge with, but you can see it's harder at the top where I started, but it tapers at the bottom. It tapers off into a softer edge. I really like that variety. Because the truth is, variety is the secret. If you look at an amateur painting, 
some of my old paintings, maybe some of your old paintings, look for a lack of variety. Okay, and you, you were almost guaranteed to find it because no, no beginner knows how to do this. This is less about um, education and more about self-expression. You have to get to a point in your work where you're confident with expressing your ideas on the canvas. I, I have decided that this image is lit by a warm light. You know, it's kind of afternoon daylight, uh, sunlight. And that means that predominantly it's going to have warm colors. You know, if you look at the grass overall, it's predominantly a very warm color. You know, it's, it's in this range of oranges and reds. So overall warm light. But within that warm light, I want variety. I, I don't want the colors to be imprisoned in this one little area of the color wheel. I still want to use all of the hues that are available to me. But I want to use them correctly. I want to use them subtly and tastefully by making them intermingle with the warm. And I do so using grays mostly. So I will use these oranges, right? And I'll use more saturated versions of them because, because the light is warm, it warrants a warmer use, or sorry, a more saturated use of the warm colors because the sunlight being warm will drive the warm colors to be quite saturated. But when I use cools, I'm keeping them a little grayer because if I did something like this, it's just too much. It, it's too much against the, it's too saturated cool against the saturated warm, okay? For my taste, you, you might be able to pull it off. And certainly I can probably find a few spots where I can pull this off. But in general, sophisticated color is based on grays, keeping things quite gray. And you'll notice that when you have a painting that's constructed with grays, you can get very subtle warm and cools happening. It's to the point where I don't even really care what color I'm using here. It's mostly about how far away it is from gray that determines its effect of warm and cool on the painting, okay? This happens to be in the purpley range. I mean, I'm enjoying that right now, totally unplanned. But you can see it's quite gray. If I increased it, it's now getting too much of that now will get very um, gaudy maybe is the word I'm not sure what the right word is it's too much you'll get too much color there's a, there is a such thing as too much color you st I still want the painting to look predominantly warm let's let me bring up a uh, quick example here okay so here's a blank little strip of canvas that I'm going to demonstrate something to you uh, let's start with a warm color let's say this color here this is the color that I want my painting to be in mostly. And let me paint this across here. And then over at the other side, I kind of want my shadows to be this cool color. Now, the easiest way to blend these is by simply putting down some brush strokes of various opacity and blending them, okay? And this actually illustrates a important idea that I want to show you right now. Um, as as very as simple as this is, and as crude as this is, it demonstrates something that I call the warp effect, and that is going from warm to cool. You need to pass through a gray. You can start here, and as I sample further and further to the right, you can see it's getting grayer, right? The hue is not changing that much, but the saturation is getting quite gray, and all of a sudden it it's almost totally gray there, and all of a sudden it pops out. It warps, the color warps from, from here all the way up to here, and it pops out through the gray. The gray is like your warp zone, and it comes out into blue, okay? Or it can come out into, into any color you want. It shows how you can use gray as a means of transitioning between colors. What you don't want to do, or at least what you, know, you kind of want to be careful of, is, is putting too many little shifts like this. You certainly can do that if you want a candy coated painting. But uh, I find the gray idea to be quite powerful. Now, if this were a painting that I was doing, let's say this were an abstract painting, I, I wouldn't be finished here because this is too simple. This is too blended. I haven't done enough manual work here to blend the two colors. What I would want to do is probably get out the smudge tool and the, within this warm, I have this big blob of warm color. I want to create some variety. So one thing I'll do is just get the smudge tool, and hopefully this shows up on YouTube, it should, uh, is I'm just blending in using the smudge tool 
some various hues that are all considered warm. I consider all these hues warm. Okay, warm. I'm not trying to paint anything that has form, so I'm just showing you color. Okay, this is why color by itself is abstract. It doesn't mean anything by itself, but it's beautiful. Color is the way, probably, in my opinion, the most powerful way we can express ourselves in paint. This is the reason I paint is to use color. Drawing is fun, but it's just something I do as a formality. I would love it if I could just be an abstract artist, but the truth is, no one would really pay attention to you because I want to. Uh, you know, the audience wants to see something that they can understand. And then on top of that, it needs to have an abstraction layer of color. Okay. When I look at paintings now, I am actually more fascinated by how abstract the artist can get with their edges and color rather than the drawing itself. I mean, I love good drawing, but so many people in accomplishing drawing, they kind of forget or, or perhaps don't even discover the fact that abstract color use is of equal importance and even more important when it comes to expressing yourself emotionally in a painting. And when the two can come together, literal drawing and abstract use of color, it's, it's magic. And the best painters out there understand that. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find colors within this context of warm going to cool. I'm trying to find transitionary colors and they can be anywhere. They can be anywhere. As long as I'm in the right context of thinking of my gray warp zones, okay, the colors in this middle area are going to be a little more grayed down as I transition to cool. And then as I come into the cools, I can start increasing my saturation and going a little further away from gray. Okay, another question I commonly get asked is how do I know what color to use? as though there were a such thing as a correct color to pick, like that's the right color or that's the wrong color. Th that doesn't exist. Okay. If you are someone who has that question, get it out of your mind because it will, it will just slow you down. It will hurt your progress. There is no such thing as the right color. There is only the right context. And I can't tell you what the right context is because I can't tell you how to express yourself. Okay, that's why color is abstract. With color, it's all about your personal expression. This is just one way of going from warm to cool. It's a very sophisticated way of doing it because it allows you to use any color you have access to with digital technology you can use in this method, okay? And it's, it's a beautiful way of painting. The, the reason I love it so much is I can limit myself as much as I can, as much as I want, or I can expend the color as much as I want. It's, it's limitless. You can do whatever. And the beauty part of digital painting is that you have all these colors at your disposal. Here's another painting that um, if you've been to my website, you've definitely seen this painting. Let's look at it from a distance. What you notice at this stage is the drawing, of course. It's, you, know, you know that it's a bridge with some water with a monster and a kid reading a book. That's the drawing. And the second thing you notice is that it takes place during the day being lit by a low lit yellow sun coming from the right. That's probably all you notice here. But when you zoom in, the painting speaks to you, hopefully, on a whole different level. And it's a level of abstraction. Look at all the colors blending. And it, it, this is not something that requires masterful technique or anything. It just requires you to be able to search within yourself and try and find what it is that's going to make something interesting uh, on an abstract level, okay? And the way you mingle colors together will be all about your personality. This is the way I like to do it. Some people like my use of color, some people don't. Um, that's the name of the game, and you will have to find your own voice. And that takes a while. You know, finding your own voice is another thing I, I talk to my students about, and it's something I, I can't give you as a teacher. You know, even if you took my classes that last potentially a year, I can't give you your own personal voice. It took me years to find mine, and I'm still developing it. Whatever it is about a painting that makes you tick, and for me, it's about these abstract minglings of color and edges. Look how abstract the background is getting. If I uh, were to crop this painting like this, that's an abstract painting right there. And my hope is that if I were to crop this painting like this, I would hope that that painting is interesting. It doesn't look like anything, but I hope that it's interesting as an abstract expression. You know, you can crop this painting anywhere. Let's, let's move this crop box around. I'm hoping that any 
any given crop is interesting to look at. That's my goal. And that is the best I can do at explaining the way I use color. Here's another painting, which palette-wise is a complete reversal of the warm light, cool shadow thing. This one is completely a uh, very cold light. It's, uh, it, it's an experiment in finding abstractions of color. You know, zoom right in here. Nothing is left to chance. You can see in this one, I use a textured brush or a sort of a scattered triangular brush. That much is chance, but the color varieties is actually wh where I spend most of my time when I paint. It's not so much in the drawing. The drawing is simple. You know, anyone can draw these pumpkin-shaped heads. That, that was easy. What's difficult, or what keeps me going, is really just trying to find the most appealing possible abstraction. You know, this pumpkin patch was a great subject, I guess, to paint, because in and of itself, a pumpkin patch has so many little parts to it that it'd be impossible to draw them all in detail. Like all the little leaves and pumpkins and stems and grass and there's a fence in there. There's so much stuff that I had so much fun in just trying to abstract it. Like if you look at the pumpkins in the foreground, they more or less look like pumpkins. I've applied a little more drawing to them. But in the background, it's just swatches of color. And you only believe it's pumpkins. If I just showed you this, you wouldn't know what it was. But if I show you this, you know that it's a pumpkin patch. It's, it's almost, uh, I kind of joke to some of my students that I have the lazy approach to painting, where, which is I only draw where I have to. Because I hate drawing. I don't like drawing. I only draw where I have to. And where you have to draw is in composition uh, and focal point. So the composition, I have to draw to make sure that I put things where I wanted them to go. That's a form of drawing. And then it, within that, you have to draw, you know, I have to draw these characters properly. But other than that, it, it's abstract. Now, I've talked about edges a little bit in this video. And again, look at my painting fundamentals video for more on edges. Edges are incredibly important because if I take the smudge tool again, I want to make sure that I am using a variety of edge. So with the smudge tool, I tend to paint quite soft edges, whereas with this square brush, my edges become a lot more hard on each side. Each, each side of this rectangular brush stroke is, is a hard edge. And I might soften that by putting a stroke next to it and a stroke next to that. That's one way of softening an edge. You don't always have to blend things. Blending actually can be quite overdone very easily. I really hate the look of airbrush, digital airbrush paintings, because it's, it's left too much to chance at the edges you're creating. The computer does too much work for you. I want to be the one controlling the edges of my painting. So you can use any brush to create these edges. Get a scattered brush like this and put it in sparingly. And then what I might do from there is I don't like all those little hard edges, so I might get the smudge tool and smudge them together a bit. Of course, all the while, I'm thinking about temperature and I'm thinking about mingling these little shifts of color within the overall family that I'm in. I'm in a you know family of cool colors right now. So I will keep that in mind as I'm putting all these strokes down. You know, like I'm not gonna go get this color, this incredibly warm color, and put it here. Because it would look out of place. I might be able to find a spot or two for a little bit of orange. Like a really hot orange like that. But too much of it, let's put too much of it in here, is way out of place. You know, look at that pumpkin. It sticks out like a sore thumb because it's out of context. That warm color is out of context with this palette. That warm color might be better in here, where the pumpkin just happens to have more of a warm local color, and I might be able to find an area for this. Can you see, like, that looks okay to me. I can go with that. I spend most of my hours on a painting doing this stuff. This is where I find what I call detail, which is not close-up detail like a camera would capture, detail in more of a sense of attention to detail. Yeah, here's another uh, painting. Again, this one has an incredibly warm palette, but it's the same principle. You know, it, it's, it's always the same thing. Painting never really changes. It's just, it's just the context that changes. The, the palette gives you your context, and then f within that palette, it's all about what you can do to express yourself artistically and emotionally. Yeah, I particularly liked the back of this owl here, how it goes from a warmish red to a coldish purple. I really enjoyed that transition. Within that, I did my best to execute that and as expressive as you can. 
Here's one where the drawing was so simple that really all I had was the variations of color to be expressive with. This one kind of goes crazy. I used a flat brush for the whole thing and just trying to put in as many variations as I could while still keeping it focused on the subject matter. And just to drive the point home, here's one last painting with no background this time, proving that there's no difference. Characters or backgrounds are the same. It's all about, again, being expressive after you've done the drawing. Okay, the drawing was carefully worked out so the pose was correct. The relationship of the little guy with his father was correct. That took some time in itself. But then what took more time was getting those expressive, subtle temperature shifts and subtle edge varieties to really work. You know, you can really see it around the feet area here. All these little temperature shifts mingling together to hopefully create the pleasing effect of the whole thing. Um, so that concludes the talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, thanks a lot for coming to my channel and for all the support that you guys have given me over the years. I am really looking to continue to pump out some free stuff for you guys. But uh, in the meantime, check out my website. I've got a storefront attached to that um, where you can buy prints. And, and I'm always doing online workshops. I've got a instructional app coming out soon. So all that stuff will be posted on my store and on my website. So until next time, thanks for watching.